Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, today we have James from Protocol Love. Uh, hi. hi, James. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, could you explain what you do, who you are briefly to the audience? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm James. Um, I work for Protocol Labs. Protocol Labs is an, an R&D lab that drives breakthroughs in computing to push humanity forwards. Uh, what does push humanity forwards mean? Well, it means about establishing uh, digital human rights so we're all protected and safe online. Um, it means that we uh, develop uh, the interfaces of technology like artificial intelligence, like A and VR, like brain computing interfaces and other technologies in an open uh, and permissionless way. Um, and it also means that we uh, develop and, and, and upgrade our governance and, and economies, um, again, in a, in, a, in a safe and secure way. Um, and a Protocol Labs is, has been a long advocate for building tools uh, and protocols that upgrade the internet. So we have a number of protocols like the Interplanetary File System, which is a, 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 an enabler of the peer-to-peer -peer web, so the internet can work between uh, you and me and, and others in a distributed way. Uh, we've got other protocols like Filecoin, which is a crypto-powered uh, storage network and already has over 1% of global decentralized uh, storage, global storage capacity, which is fantastic, um, and other technologies. And we basically uh, also provide a lot of support to startups across the world. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're building um, a new technology, then we are our advocates for uh, funding, for incubating and supporting your growth. So it's great to be here with you today, Joe. Thank you. Um, of course, you've been working on like so many stuff, but what's your focus? What's the focus of the protocol love for now? Yeah, I think our mission as, as Protocol Labs is, is still the same. We want to really drive those breakthroughs in, in computing. Um, we've built, uh, we've successfully designed, deployed and scaled a number of different projects. Um, and we continue to, to nucleate, build and, and fund even more startups. So we've built um, across all of our ecosystems um, about 600 startups or companies that are addressing humanity's greatest challenges as we speak across all different areas and sectors of the economy. So continuing to support all of those organizations, including through a new initiative that, that I'm now part of called Founders by Protocol Labs, which accelerates startups and provides them everything they need to support their growth as an entrepreneur. Um, and we really want to take that to, to the next level. So we want even more people building um, or experimenting on our technologies and driving new use cases. So um, I briefly mentioned uh, earlier in a different um, forum that uh, we've just launched the Filecoin virtual machine, which is really exciting um, as that enables not just storage, but it also enables programmability on the Filecoin network. And, and what that does is open a whole new set of use cases for new projects. So things like perpetual storage or data DAOs or data access control. So who controls and can access certain uh, data sets. And all of that is really important driving towards an open data economy. So we're really committed and excited about that. Thank you. What brought you, what brought you um, to Japan? It's a great, it's a great question. Um, so we're, we're sponsors this week of ETH Global or ETH Tokyo, which is being hosted on, on Friday through Sunday. Uh, we're big advocates for supporting the best builders um, across the Web3 ecosystem and beyond. Um, I'm also here to connect with as many innovative new projects and startups as possible that we can incent not just to experiment on our technology, but also benefit from all of the support that we give to founders. I'm delighted also to connect with lots of partners. So we've actually run a number of accelerator programs here in Japan already with partners like Fracton Ventures, um, backed by Next Web Capital and F Ventures. Um, and we we are here today at an event hosted by Tani, a close investment partner of ours. And there are others that uh, I'm delighted to be seeing here again. They always show up to our events across the world. So uh, it's great to be here in, in their, on their home turf uh, to support the builders that are here. Thank you. Uh, Japan is traditionally uh, perceived as a conservative culture company or the country. But um, what do you think about um, Japan as a Web3 community mm -hmm. related? Uh, something like that. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. I think a really exciting time uh, for Japan and Web three. So, I think the the foundations of Japan um, are a very very strong and compelling technology uh, ecosystem, and also a very technology savvy population um, who really understand the basic principles of what Web three can unlock for everyone. Um, we've also now seen that match with political appetite. The the paper, the white paper that has just been released by the, the ruling LDP party is is really exciting because it's probably the most forward-leaning um, government document that I've at least seen in recent years that looks to 
um, further provide projections for digital asset economies across the world. Um, and that's a really exciting time if you're building a DAO, there's potential re regulatory frameworks coming, and um, if you're pushing uh, the, the barriers in gaming, there's now more opportunities to be safeguarded. Um, uh, and so what I'm really excited about is there are political conditions here, the economic conditions of entrepreneurialism, which Japan's always been, been known for, are, are prevalent. Um, uh, and I think at the at the societal or individual level, you have uh, you have builders now being matched by investors. A bit of a gap um, in previous years, I think, uh, that Japan has sought to um, possibly overcome. I think you mentioned conservatism. I think um, digital assets are sometimes looked to as, as quite risky, and so conservative investors may not have felt as comfortable. But I think we're seeing more and more investors, especially Web3 native investors, really putting money into Web3 startups that are based here um, in Japan, which is which is really exciting. And so we're seeing a num more developers being matched by more appetite from investors. And, and that, with the economic and, and political conditions, mean it's a really exciting time if actions are, are, are met, um, if the words are met uh, with actions. Okay. Have you spoken with any other, I mean, any um, corporates? Or have you heard of anything around corporate side? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting time for, for enterprise. So a lot of, we've had various conversations with, with different, um, I suppose, innovation and venture arms of, of enterprise here in Japan and also across the world, who are really looking to understand what Web3 can unlock for their organizations. Now, whether that's uh, tokenizing assets, whether that's looking at um, new sectors like how to help, how can decentralize finance, offer new uh, avenues in things like insurance, um, the conversations are there. And I think there is increasing appetite um, and we have today here some of the leading or, um, you know, corporates in, in Japan, uh, including Accenture and, and Docmo, which is fantastic to see their appetite. Um, and obviously some recent announcements of deploying capital yeah. and here. And we want, the, to prom we want to encourage as many builders as possible to have those conversations with enterprise, to, to, to tell them about what they can do to further unlock those opportunities. And if you're an enterprise and you're looking at some of these potential startups, they can not only unlock new avenues for growth for you, but they could also provide partnership opportunities or m and activities or other investment um, opportunities. So it's, a, it's an exciting time where enterprise is also coming to the table in a really serious way. And in Japan, at least, that enterprise is, is very close with government. So again, another precondition to hopefully advance growth. Okay, thank you so much. And then lastly, can you give some message to the audience? <laughs> putting me on the spot here, Joe. Um, yes, a message to the audience. Um, I think people like Joe, and I want to just shout out to everything that, that he's done on his channel, are really important to diversify the avenues we have to communicate what um, emerging and, and uh, frontier technologies can do. So Web3 in particular, um, there is some fantastic people who've been advancing this for, for a long time. And I think Joe is just really broadening that audience. And so if you're part of Joe's channel and you're new here and you want to learn more, please stay with Joe. Uh, please also, you know, be, be uh, I suppose, be curious as to what is happening. Look at other avenues. Um, speak to as many as your, your friends uh, and, and others in your community about what's happening um, and, and come and join because the the Web3 economy is, is just getting started. Thank you, James. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.